Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome to PCF Montebello this morning, this, our Sunday morning service. I'm curious, is there anybody blessed this morning? A little bit, a lot maybe even? <laughs> welcome to you. I want to take this moment to welcome those online as well. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, and even TikTok. We're thankful that you're with us, and we're blessed to see you there. And so today, uh, we're just going to open up in prayer, but what I'd like to do is I want to invite everyone to just worship God and praise the Lord and, and seek His face and hunger and thirst for Him like never before, because uh, I'll tell you what, tomorrow's not promised, but I'll tell you what is, uh, we're promised to be in the presence of God when we worship Him. So let's do that with all of our heart. Let's open up in prayer, and let's ask God to have his way. And uh, I'm going to, I personally enjoyed having the, ha, not all of the lights off because it's too dark, but maybe, you know, we can dim it down a little. It's, it's cool. That way you can worship and, and maybe not worry about uh, being focused on or whatever. So we're going to do that. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we love you and thank you. We give you praise and honor and glory for the blessing that we have to be able to come to you, to worship you, to praise your name, to love you, to thank you. And Father, we just want to ask that your presence would be so powerfully felt in this place. Lord, even those connecting online, that Lord, your presence would be there in their living rooms. But Lord, I do pray, Father, your will be done, my God. Your will be done because you, you know exactly what you want to do. We want to surrender and submit to all that you're doing. Doing. And Lord, we pray that your name would be lifted high and the blessing of the Lord be upon us for your glory and honor. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Let's go for it, folks. Let's worship God together.
Troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. Yeah, I can see. Yes, I can see a light that is coming. For oh, the heart that, that holds on, there will be an end to these troubles, 
But until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. Hallelujah, Lord. My God, you're worthy and I praise your name, Lord. i 
listen. That's why I trust him. That's Come on, why people of God, I let's go. Him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard. And he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him, that's why I trust him, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord. Try. 
Trust in God, the Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God. Oh, did that mean something to you? Do you trust in the Lord? Come on and praise his name. Yes, my king and my God, we trust in the Lord. Oh, and we know he never fails. He never fails. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what I'm most thankful for. We fail. We make mistakes. But he never fails, and all oh, his mercies are in, are renewed every day, and his grace, oh, sufficient for us. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in a time of prayer, and I want to encourage you. Trust in the Lord. This, I mean, that, especially a song like that should remind us that we trust God. I think we've all found out by now what it feels like to try to get something done, to try to make something happen that just seems a little beyond your reach or just seems like next to impossible. We've all been there at some point or another. But I want to encourage you and remind you, it doesn't stop with us. And it's not up to our strength or our ability. The impossible is possible, not because we grow into the ability to do it, but because Almighty God is the God of the impossible. Now, I just feel this in my spirit. Some of us, could be me this morning, but some of us, God could be just holding, like holding something back because you're just trying too hard. You're not seeking him. You're not asking him. You're not really going to God for his direction, his strength, his wisdom. And so God's like, you know what? I, uh, I'm just not going to let that happen until you learn to trust me. How many know we need, we need to learn how to trust God, right? And, and, and understand this. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to take some things to God that are things that are beyond us. So we have to trust God. But I tell you what, it's even better when we learn how to trust God with things that we can do something about. I'll give you an example. When the cupboards are bare and you got to go buy food, you have two choices nowadays for some. You could either seek the Lord and say, God, I need your provision. You're my provider, and I'll do what I can, but Lord, you're my provider. Or you could just not pray at all and go grab your credit card and go buy food. See, that doesn't take any trust in God at all, does it? No trust whatsoever. Now, some of you out there saying, you know what, but we're in hard times. We need to. Well, if God speaks that to you, then amen, but... Don't let that rob you from learning how to trust God. Listen to what I'm saying to you. I have been the recipient of miracles so many times in my life where I thought there's no way that this is going to happen. The finances that we need for this are not going to come through. It just doesn't seem like there's any possible way. We're going to just have to do without. And in the nick of time... You just see the, the hand of the Lord come and do something that I couldn't do even if I wanted to, even if I tried. Just to remind us, you are not the source. You're not the physician. You're not the lawyer. <laughs> you're not the paycheck. You're the child of God. How many of you want to go to God with that? Amen. He's ours. He's our king. He's our Lord. And we belong to him. Let's go to the Lord. We're praying. I don't know if you guys heard about a prophecy happening as we speak. Prophecy happening as we are living in these days. I believe, if, I believe uh, the reporting is that Iran has, Iran has attacked Israel. 
The Bible's clear, folks. The Bible is clear. The armies of the north will come after Israel in the last days. Not the north of America, the north of Israel. Who is it? It's Gog and Magog. Translated, Russia. You might say, wow, that's not Iran. But they're connected. They do the bidding of the larger country. And so forth and so on. There's so much that the Bible says that is coming to pass right now. Right now. People of God, if there's ever been a time for us to learn how to trust God, it's now. Because more is coming. More is coming. Let's go to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' precious name. Lord, we recognize, Lord, that you are almighty God and no matter how big the problem is, how difficult it may seem, you are king. You are almighty. And Lord, we place our trust in you. Lord, not because we have to, but because we know you are God, you are almighty. And Lord God, it is the greatest thing you ever taught us, and that is to trust you no matter what, Lord. Gracious God, we come to you, bring in our every need. But Father, we know there are many, Lord God, many who are suffering far beyond what we have ever experienced, Some Suffering in ways that we may never even see or know. Oh, Lord God, we take this time to pray and ask that you would strengthen the, our brothers and sisters in the Middle East, those who are uh, being attacked, those who are innocent, that don't have anything to do with this demonic stuff. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would help them through this difficult time. As your word tells us, Lord God, you fight for Israel. Lord God, you are almighty God and they are your chosen people. Lord God, we bless them and ask that you would be with them, Father. And all the innocent, Lord God, that are on the opposing side that have nothing to do with it. Gracious God, we pray your mighty hand be upon, Lord God, these people. And Lord, we know when your word says it, it will come to pass, Lord God. We know and trust that, Lord, all things, Lord God, that you have stated, Lord God, Lord, we can count on it. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name we pray, Lord God, that the people of God, the children of God across the land would, Lord God, our faith would rise, our, our faith would arise in you, Lord God, that our courage, Lord God, that our focus would be greater upon you, knowing, Lord God, that so many difficult things, Lord God, in this world will take place, but Lord God, your reviving of our hearts, your reviving of your people and your body, Lord God, strengthening us in our faith, Lord God is also happening and Lord we just surrender to you and ask that you would fill us, fill us up with your love, fill us with your power fill us Lord God with your mighty hand oh Lord, fill us up my God, oh Lord not because Lord God we just want to be selfish, no we want to give the love of Christ, the wisdom of God the truth of God out to anyone and everyone who will listen Lord God even those who might not listen gracious God we pray Lord God raise up your people Lord God Lord, do all that is needed, Father, for your people, Lord God, to be able to represent you in a way that's pleasing to you and effective and anointed and fruitful. Lord, we repent. We surrender. We ask that you would use us for your glory, for your glory. Oh, my King and my God, we take this time to thank you for healing the sick, for touching people's lives, for strengthening the, the weary. Thank you, Lord, for for helping us to get out of our self, our self thinking and our, our self centeredness and the things that are happening to self. Thank you, Lord God, for teaching us, Lord, what it means to be a child of God, even in the last days. Thank you for the children. We bless the children today. Thank you for the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Thank you for those, Lord God, who are out there hurting and you're reaching them even now. You're touching them even now. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Lord, we pray that our family members, friends, co-workers, neighbors, and even people who don't like us, we pray, Father, that you would use us to win them, to bring the gospel to them, that they might be saved. Lord, we ask this for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
Amen. Amen. I'm curious. I'm curious. Are you praying? Are you just, I close my eyes. I start praying. Are you praying or are you watching me pray? Are you just listening to me pray? Because if that's happening, we need to repent. We do. We need to repent. We need to ask God to forgive us because this is not a show. This is the body of Christ. It's not a show. It's not something to watch. It's us connecting to the Lord, knowing, surrendering to the Lord, knowing we need him. Amen? Anybody amen that? Amen? Okay. Just making sure. If I, if I got to get out of the way and go down there so you're not looking at me while we're praying, you'll start, we'll pray harder, we'll pray more effectively, then I'll do that. I'll go outside. <laughs> I'll go stand in the rain if it, if it matters. Go for it. Hit the lights and greet someone. Greet somebody this morning. Let somebody know that they are blessed. Amen. All right. So we got that up. Thank you. That helps. It's nice to know you have my back. God bless you, everybody. Let's go ahead and make ourselves nice and comfortable. All right. Don't get me wrong. In no way, in no way do I ever want to hinder the fellowship that's taking place in this church. I'm grateful for it. So grateful for it. But how many know we got to get into the word? Anybody want to get into the word? You bless me, sis. Amen. Let me ask it again. Anybody want to get into the word this morning? Yeah. Woo, come on now. God is good. He is so good. And I'm just really grateful for his presence. And I'm grateful for the fellowship that I'm feeling in here. This is so important. 
uh, so important to us. And, and uh, we're really working towards that, working towards learning how to, you know, not just, not just go to church. How many know it's not too hard to learn how to go to church? We want to be the church. Amen. So what, when we're in the building that we call our church that we come to, that's great. But we're the church. It becomes the church when we're here. And so I just wanted to mention that, that we, wanna, or we just want to be the church. And so that fellowship, I hear the, the, the connection, everybody saying hi and reaching out. That's what, that's what we need to do and continue to do. Well, this morning, as you know, today we are going to be, uh, we have some fellowships taking place, and I'm thankful for them. We have a, a ladies fellowship, birthday, birthday fellowship lunch, and we have a, a brothers, a men's birthday fellowship lunch, and uh, uh, those are happening. And I just wanted to mention it now because uh, uh, the weather ain't going to stop us. I think about the brothers and sisters in other countries and other states that the weather is way worse and they find a way to make fellowship important. And so I want to... I wanna uh, promote that and remind you that we can spend a little time together uh, and be safe just as easily as we can sit on our couch and fellowship with a television. And how many know that's not real fellowship? That's just watching television. Oh, but my favorite preacher is still not fellowship. It's just watching something. But in fellowship, we get to hang out. We get to spend time. We get to chat with each other, catch up, build relationships and uh, so these fellowships are going to be really, really good, and I want to encourage you to be a part of them. All right. And so, thank you, Lord. I guess before we get started, just because my memory's bad, Sister Brenda, did we already sing? Or are we singing this morning? Thank you. I've been having to ask Sister Brenda. My, Brenda knows we've been doing yard work, and yard, something about cut grass, it, it, it's, it's like um, a memory thing for me. It, it just... I cut the grass, I lose my memory. That's why my grass is two feet hot. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So anyway, uh, praise God. Praise the Lord. We're going to get, so I'm talking all about fellowships and the fellowships we have today because we're going to minister this morning on the subject of fellowship. And you might say, oh, I already know about that. But let's, let's let the word of God speak to us about what the Bible teaches about fellowship and how important it is and what exactly does the Lord want us to know. And uh, I'll admit to you right up front that I do not have the ability, wisdom or knowledge, to tell you everything there is to know about fellowship. I don't. Uh, but what God's Word teaches us, we're going to get into that. And so, uh, uh, so one more thing I want to do is welcome everybody and we're going to, uh, we're going to, have a blessing this morning, right before we get into the word, we're going to have a blessing this morning, and I thank God for this sister, because this sister is such a blessing, she's been a blessing to this church for a long time, one of these days maybe she'll refresh and share her testimony of how she got here, one of these days, right, right, one of these days we'll, we'll, we'll hear the testimony, how did this sister get here, we see her all the time, and uh, she's always up there te showing us how, what it, how to worship, right, uh, and you're all like, who is that? Of course, it's, uh, it, it could be a number of the ladies that are usually up there. But t this morning, we're going to get blessed by my sister, Alma. She's going to come up and share a song with us. Welcome her up as she comes to, to share a song. And I really mean that. She's coming. I really mean that. When I, uh, I go back and watch our, our videos just to kind of learn and grow, see what we can fix and how we can adjust things. And when I look up there, I see I'm up there and she's got them hands lifted up. She sways. She's got a little rhythm, you know. And I'm like, yeah, go for it, my sis. Go for it. Just don't try a cartwheel, okay? Because we don't want to bring in the ambulance. No, I'm just kidding. Welcome, welcome her one more time. Welcome her up. You need some help, my sis? You can use your mic. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Lord bless you. Um, I've, I've actually shared this song a long time ago, but I've been wanting to share it again because... It's so personal to me, and uh, but I do have a scripture for it. It's Psalms 8, 4 through 6 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, 
and the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. So that's powerful to me. The, the last part was for free. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, I pray you all be blessed. If you do know the song, please, please uh, worship the Lord with it, with me, okay? Okay. <laughs> i 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my sister Alma. What a blessing. Oh, I love that. I love the words to that song. So powerful. One of my favorite uh, songs is also named that, Who Am I? And it just, uh, songs like that always remind us of, you know, that the fact that God doesn't owe us anything. And sometimes we treat God like if he owes us something. And he doesn't. He doesn't owe us anything. He loves us and he gives to us because he loves us. Not because somehow, you know, we made some deal. And so it's, it's healthy to say, who am I? You know, in God's eyes, we're his children for sure. Amen. Well, thank you, my sis, one more time. Anybody blessed? I was blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, all right, we're going to get into the word, and I'm going to ask you, if you will, to open your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, Brother Jace, we're going to go with the NLT this morning. Although I have my, my trusty New King James Version with me at all times. And um, I'm thankful. I, I just, just by request, I'd, I asked for our uh, youth to be in with us today. Uh, they usually go and have a, a, a really uh, good time over there and, and they hang out and, and, and have Bible study in the youth room. But um, I, I requested for you guys to be with us today because I feel like this message will help us as a body, help us all together as the body of Christ. And so we need, we really need to, to be able to refresh. Uh, amen. And so this is, like I was saying, this, we're going to be ministering on fellowship. The title of this message is called, Called to Fellowship. Called to Fellowship. And so I'm going to go ahead and ask... Uh, I'm going to have to read it off the screen because I, I don't have the NLT with me, but I, I want you to read with me as we're reading. We're going to read quite a few verses, okay, but there's just going to be a section of it that we need to see. So verse 1, and we're going to read 17 verses. Was that an overdose for some of you? I'm sorry, overdosing on the word. I can't handle 17 verses. You can handle two and a half hours of a movie. Uh-huh, uh-huh, so let's read this. Here we go. This is a letter from Paul the Apostle to the church in Corinth, first letter, first of two. And they were, he's sharing with them something that they were in need of learning about. Okay, so let's take a look. This letter is from Paul chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Sosthenes. I am writing to God's church in Corinth to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. So you get the picture that as he's writing, he's acknowledging that even though there's the people of God in the church at Corinth, and they're the ones that are receiving this letter, he's acknowledging that the Lord is the Lord of all who call out to him everywhere in the world. And so that alone brings us into this letter, brings us into uh, the learning and receiving of this letter. All right, and so verse 3. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he's given you now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way. Stop right there. We're talking about, the, about being called to fellowship and we realize that the people are the church, not the building. And we realize that if you look at the church only in that way, that it's just the people, then the church is one big church worldwide. All the believers are considered the church, which that would be true. But this passage right here gives a distinction 
that there is a gathering of believers. There's a gathering of believers in local churches all over the place. We're not able to connect with everyone everywhere. And so as we come together in our local churches, we're called to fellowship within those local churches. And we're called to, if you will, do Christian life together, uh, live God's word out with each other. And that takes an element of commitment and faithfulness to a local church. And so notice he says, through him God has enriched your church. Remember, the church is the body of Christ. But Paul is writing to the Corinthians, that local body. Does everybody get that? All right, so God has enriched your church in every way with all your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. Verse 6, let's keep going. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says. And he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. Let each be no, uh, excuse me, let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. For some members of Chloe's household, if your name is Chloe, that's not you. Okay, Chloe. For some members of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels. My dear brothers and sisters, some of you are saying, I am a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos, or I follow Peter, or I follow only Christ. Has Christ been divided into factions? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. For now, no one can say they were baptized in my name. Oh yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus, but I don't remember baptizing anyone else. I like how Paul just threw that in there to you know, give us the whole picture. For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news and not with clever speech for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. There, there is so, so many treasures and so much richness in this passage. 17 verses are so much. Way too much to cover today. We're going to cover uh, a, a main point that Paul is writing to them about because the whole letter, the two letters, have so much more that he instructs the people with. But I want to talk to you about what we've been called to. We've been called to fellowship. To fellowship. Now, I read the NLT because it gives a, just a real easy flow to it. It's an easy way to understand it. I personally like the New King James better, but this, it just, I like the way it reads. And you're going to understand in a moment why we, why we picked this to read. And so when we look at this passage, we realize that Paul was addressing the Corinthian church by telling them, we're called to fellowship. I want to point your attention to verse 9. And if you'll pop verse 9 back up, verse 9 says this. God will do this for he is faithful. How many know God's faithful? Yes, he is. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says. And he has invited you. Everybody say this with me. I'm invited. Okay, that was pretty good, actually. Not bad. Let's do it again. Say, I'm invited. All right. What are you invited to? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're invited. Here's what the scripture says. And the Lord has invited us into, say it, say this word, partnership. It's interesting to me because the, the, the New King James and the original King James tells us 
that we've been invited. I'm going to read the, that for you. It says, God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so when you look at the two translations, you might get the idea, thanks Jace, uh, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. If you look at the two translations, you might think, hey, wait a minute, what's wrong here? Is there a contradiction? Is there uh, 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 an error in Scripture? Absolutely not. Because the word fellowship can mean a number of things, but they all point, when you take the word fellowship out of Scripture, they all point to, uh, they all point to one specific thing. Thing and uh, and I'm careful to say uh, to say thing because I really don't want to call Jesus a thing. Every word, every definition of this word points to Jesus. And so, first, I want to point out to you that the word fellowship can also mean the word communion. Communion. So, so uh, think about this word communion. Communion. If you break it down, it's simply common unity. Common unity. Does that make sense? And most of us are like, we think of communion, we think of a cracker and some juice. But that is the body and blood of Christ that was given for us so that we, as his body, can be one in him and that we could be in communion with him. Everybody listening so far? <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, yard work. Next time I'll invite you. You'll be invited to my house to do the lawn for me so I can sound better on Sunday. Just teasing. But thank you, Brother Ray. I appreciate that. Um, and so another definition that we look at when we see Scripture is the word fellowship can, can also mean to partner, to be in partnership. Partnership. And so if you think about it, in that way, the way the NLT translates it, we've been invited to be one in Christ. He's the head, we're the body. So we're one. We're in unity. And in our unity, we have answered the call to fellowship. What is the call to fellowship? The call to fellowship has to do with an intentional decision to to act and live and commit to a uniting together with the body of Christ, with our brothers and sisters together to partner in the work and love and truth of Christ. In other words, we are not just, you know, when we talk about communion, we're not just doing the communion service. When we talk about fellowship, it's not just about going down to Sizzler or hanging out at the church or, or to where did we go last? Happy family. That was pretty good. That was really good. I liked it. Uh, and um, I'm so jealous because the ladies are going to Z's today. I am so jealous. That is, some of the ladies are like, what's Z's? They don't know about it yet. That is my top three favorite restaurant, and it's right here in Montebello. And when you get there, you might go, why is it fa his favorite? Just know, I just love that place. Every, I've been there a number of times every single time, because I like Mediterranean food, like that kind of stuff, and it has different things on the menu. But every time I go, it's 100, man. It's 100%. I love that place. You know what? Let's pray. Let's just go now. What do you say? Let's close the service. Let's go. <laughs> I'm kidding. But again, so when we talk about fellowship, it's not just gathering together to break bread and eat, and those things are part of it. And we read all of those things in Scripture, so I don't want to, you know, I don't want to confuse anybody, but we need to understand the main purpose because everything else comes by way of our commitments to fellowship, our commitments to being in that partnership with Christ. To be in partnership with Christ is to be in unity with what he came to do and so what he came to do is teach us about fellowship, to teach us how to fellowship in unity. And it is not, again, just hanging out, breaking bread, celebrating a birthday and having a good time. Although those things motivate, uh, those things are motivated by the desire to be together, which is a part of fellowship. I want to focus on the partnership part, the partnership, because and, and when, we, when we're looking at this letter, you're going to see it in a minute, because when you think about 
fellowship in a, different, in a few different simple ways, then you will find out how it affects you and how it affects through you. So let's talk about some, some, some possibilities and some, some ideas of what people might do in the name of fellowship or might think fellowship is. And so there's a, uh, somebody said this one time, I forgot who said it or else I'd give them credit, but it, it, it says this, who, who you spend time with is who you will be like. Who you spend time with is who you will be like. We were taught early on, one of our first pastors taught us, show me who you hang around with, I'll show you who you are. Right? I think Pastor Mike Neville was the one that brought that into our fellowship and taught us, taught everybody uh, as much as possible that, that, that little principle there. Show me who you hang around with and I'll show you who you are. And sometimes people think about that and in a way, I would say in the, in the wrong way. And, uh, and I think it's important because, to think about it because when you spend time with people, it's because you desire to spend time with people. You choose to. I realize that there might be some places you go and hang out with people that you don't choose to, you feel like you have to, and so you do it once a year at a birthday or something like that. I realize that there are those times that you spend some time with people that you're not, it's not your biggest choice, the, the, the people you want to spend the most time with. But on a regular basis, on a regular basis in your life, you spend time with people because you choose to. And those people you spend time with, the more time you spend, it, th that's who you're going to be like. And so the question is, and, and I think the important thing to point out is, who are those people that believers are spending time with? I mean, think about it. When you, when you spend time, you know, maybe you got some buddies at work that you, you know, you come to church, you hang out here and you shake hands, you worship together, you pray, but as soon as church is over, you're gone, man. You go take off and hang out with some, some people that maybe have nothing in common with you, with Christ, have no fellowship at all. Maybe, you, you know, we're going to go watch a game. We're going to go hang out and do this or that. We're going to, you know, we're going to go play some games or we're going we're gonna to go to the movies. We're going to go do this or that. And so, you know what, uh, that's who you spend time with. Well, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind. I think it's, it's, it's okay to say that if those are believers, then praise God. Because when you're playing games with believers, you're not going to have to worry about somebody cussing up a storm and using the Lord's name in vain and putting down everything holy and, and uh, you know, uh, raising up all the darkness. You don't have to put up with that because you're not around, an un you're not hanging out with an unbeliever because I guarantee you, you hang around with that long enough for the wrong reasons, you become like that. Well, you don't understand. I, we have this in common. I like cars, they like cars. I like video games, they like video games. I like movies, they like movies. I like going to sporting events, they like, I like going shopping, they like spending money or whatever. I, I like, uh, you know, I like that. We, that's what we have in common. Yeah, but here's the issue. You can have those things in common with believers and the quality of their lifestyle will not affect you in a negative way, will not influence you in a negative way. It'll influence you in a godly way where you are still partnering with Jesus. Does that make sense? But I guarantee you, you spend a lot of time with people that don't love God and it's your choice. Well, you know, it's just because we get along. I don't get along with anybody at church. Ooh, we might have to uncover and unpack that now. What do you got, Jace? Oh, okay. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Thank you. I did not write that on my notes, so I appreciate that one. Man, I'm going to write it now. Let me go back and read that later. And so who you hang around with is who you'll become. What, you know, what, what you do, what they do, you, you start to do. And think about it. If you hang around with somebody who can't keep their trap shut, whoa, did he just talk rude like that? Yeah. Because there's a difference between somebody who's learning to control their tongue and somebody who can't keep their trap shut. Right? How I many, oh, I made enemies today, didn't I? Like, everybody's looking at me funny. 
I mean, you hang around with somebody who just doesn't know how to stop talking about other people and putting other people down and, and you know, everything that happens, they just got something negative to say. I guarantee you, after a while, your ears will be comfortable to hear that and you will start to actually feel fine repeating or communicating in that way as well. And you, you're, you're probably saying, well, you know what? I, I can find that in the world and I can find that in church. Ooh. That's right, you can find it right here. You can find it in any church. It's true. As a matter of fact, the whole point of the letter from Paul to the Corinthian church is because they found it there. They found problems. And I thank God for the word of God because the word of God reminds us that these are the kinds of things that could happen in church and these are the, the, the word of God is here for us to get us lined back up with true fellowship. True, healthy fellowship. So I want to just extend and branch off of that thought for a minute because as a, as a believer, if you spend time with, with people that don't honor God, and I don't care if they go to church, that don't matter. If they're not honoring God with their actions and with their words and with their attitudes, then it's only a matter of time before you have that same uh, thing happening to you. you. It starts to influence you. You start to get comfortable with that. Why? Because of a choosing to do that, a choosing to be a part of that. And so just branching off of that, think about the results of a life of a person who's not walking in, and, and walking in true fellowship with the Lord. Think about what that life starts to look like. You know, you start hearing complaints. Complaints about, you know, man, I'm struggling. Man, how come my finances can't get in order? Man, I'm struggling. How come, you know, how come I just can't seem to, to like, I'm not growing. I'm, you know, I, I'm struggling. I just can't, I don't feel like I'm stronger in the Lord. I feel like I'm getting weaker. Oh, I know. It's the pastor's fault. That guy's got to preach better. Or I'm going to go find someone else who can preach better than him or her or whoever it is. No, no, and no. Because growing doesn't come from the outside in. Growing is from the inside out. Remember that song we sing, The Inside Out, right? We sing a song called The Inside Out, and it is a powerful word because when we're in Christ, we grow from the inside out. The Lord puts into us, and the, what goes into us comes out of us and transforms us. And so when you and I are taking in stuff that's not healthy for your spirit, you're hanging around with the world, you're hanging around with people that even if they go to church, again, I repeat, I don't care if they go to church, if they are acting a fool, acting like foolishness, like the way uh, uh, Proverbs tells us, doing things that dishonor God, dishonor everything you believe in, but because you have the one thing in common, you tolerate it, you put up with it, you even start to enjoy it, I guarantee you it starts to affect your spirit. Next thing you know, you don't want to go to church. You don't want nothing to do with Jesus. You don't want anything to do with any of that because you're, you're overwhelmed and consumed by the, by the appetites that were grown and built in you because of what the, the, the choices you make and who you're spending time with. You spend time with a person that's angry, look out. You, even if you don't become angry, you're going to be a victim of their anger. You'll be affected by it. You spend some time around somebody who can't keep their eyes in their sockets. Does anybody know what that means? No. You're not sure? I'll, 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 I'll describe it. You know, driving down the street with your brother in the car. And nowadays what these girls wear, I just don't understand. I don't get it. Who told them it was okay? And the brother's like, just can't stop looking. Hey, it's human. I'm human. Uh, you know, yeah, but watch what it does to your spirit. Well, what about the guy hanging around with that guy? Well, if you're a brother, you need to be helping the brother out rather than hindering the brother by going with him. Two bobbleheads checking it out. Mm -hmm. All the sisters are like, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, sisters. I don't want to hear nothing like that because nowadays the sisters are like, how do they get those six packs and eight packs? And how do they get all that? What are you doing looking at that anyway? Uh-huh. It happens. We live in a world, a weird world. 
And so let's, let's move on for time's sake. Matthew 6, 21, if you will. You guys still here? They seem like you're bored already. What's happening? I'm here to tell you that God wants us to grow because we're called to fellowship, to true biblical fellowship. And that fellowship is not going to happen if you're fellowshipping with the world. Amen. Amen to that. And keep this in mind. I've said it. I'll say it over and over again. I don't care if they go to church. You can be a worldly person that goes to church. You can go to church thinking you're fine because you go to church and you're just like the world. You know, when you walk, if you're in the midst of a crowd of people that don't believe in Christ, that hate the Lord, that don't want nothing to do with him, if they can't tell the difference between you and them, it's because there is no difference. Are you listening? So Matthew 6, 21, listen to this. Wherever your treasure is, there, there the desires of your heart will be also. Now, some people would just apply this to scripture, and, or excuse me, to, to finances and to, you know, covetousness. But no, you could have a desire to hang out with certain people. I know the opposite is true. I don't, pastor, you don't understand. The reason I don't go to the fellowships is because I don't like, you know, what happens at those fellowships. I don't like the talk and the negative, and I don't like all that. And so, and I don't blame you. I don't blame you. We shouldn't have that. No church should, but there's a letter written in the Bible, to it, because God's words is reminding us that it's going to happen, and we've got to learn how to overcome it. And I promise, it, promise you, it's not by doing uh, something else. And I want, I want to take you to another scripture. Uh, uh, turn to Proverbs 18.1, but just remember this verse. You go and hang out with people because you desire to. You like hanging out with those people. And so I want to remind you that, that uh, what's so important is, yes, even when churches are struggling and don't have good quality fellowship, the way the, the Bible talks about partnership and unity, well, that's not an excuse for us to do anything else or, or to say, well, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, but that's what I choose because every time I'm here, I get, I get negative and I get discouraged. Well, th that's not the answer. L listen to this. Proverbs 18, 1. Unfriendly people care only about themselves. They lash out at common sense. Okay, do me a favor, because I much like, rather like, the New King James on that, please. Listen to this in the New King James. Proverbs 18, 1. You see why I choose the New King James. I just feel like the translation is so much better, it's so much clearer. A man who isolates himself. Somebody say isolate. Okay, that's a brother or a sister who, I come to church, but that's all I do. I come to church, I come in, I'm the first, uh, last one here, first one to leave, because, you know, I love God, and I love the Bible, and I love his songs. It's just his people I don't like. It's his people that I can't seem to connect with. Well, guess what? You're his people. And some people, instead of choosing to be part of the answer, they run from the problem. And so what do they do? In some cases, they isolate themselves. What does the Bible say to you who isolates yourself? A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. In other words, a person who isolates himself is only thinking about himself, only thinking about what he wants, what he or she needs, or, and, and what they're unwilling to do and, uh, and, and willing to do. It's all about them. That is not being a part of the body. That is not part of the unity in Christ. That is isolation, and it's being discouraged by the word of God. You show me someone who has ever struggled with isolation, I'll show you someone who struggles in their walk. They can't seem to commit. They can't seem to follow through. They can't seem to just press through and serve God and fulfill their purpose. They're always just getting stuck, stuck. And you got to ask, what makes them stuck? What is it? Could it be that instead of understanding what true fellowship is for the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, the understanding of fellowship is, oh, it's one of those things where you hang out, and that's the part of church I don't want anything to do. That's a self-definition. That is a, not the definition of fellowship in Scripture. Have I made friends or enemies here today? Because, boy, you should see your faces up here. Oh, amen. I'm with you. I'm with you, sis. She, she just exposed me. I don't have my glasses on. That's why I can't really see what's going on. 
<laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. Because when fellowship, according to the scriptures we read, okay, we're going to look at this in a minute. True fellowship, so much to say, but I have to say just what God intends for us. True fellowship is definitely, in one of the definitions, partnership. Have you ever partnered with someone you don't totally agree with? Have you ever linked up with someone that, hey, you're not, all, you're not exactly the same, but you, 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 you press on, you do what you... You ever, do you work for a company that you don't agree with everything they do, but you still take, are responsible? Right? Well, I don't compromise. Uh, true, but you have to be honest with yourself. You know, if you go down to the core, uh, some companies invest in stuff that we, have, we want nothing to do with but we need a job. We need the paycheck, so we work there. See, we need to be honest with ourselves in this. True fellowship is a blessing because when you commit to partnership in the kingdom, and we're called to this, by the way, believers, we're called to this, when we commit to it, then you bless other people. And when you bless other people, sometimes they bless you back. Right? Does anybody remember that passage? Um, I wrote it down too because I didn't want to miss it, and I guess I did. Uh, Jace will probably find it for me. Uh, the Bible says, he who has a friend must first show himself friendly. You don't understand, Pastor. I'm not a friendly person. I've just never been a friendly person, and so I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be a friendly person. Okay, okay. Problem is, what comes with that, the reaping of that, the Lord is trying to teach us, you don't want that. You want to learn how to be a friendly person. So again, uh, when you find it, let me know, Jace. He who has a friend must first show himself friendly. In other words, the initiation comes from, thank you. Um, and so Proverbs 18, I wrote 18.1 for the other verse. I forgot. Okay. Uh, a man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than any brother. Oh, you know his name, right? Jesus, who will never leave you, never forsake you. Amen. Jesus committed to you. Jesus is absolutely committed to being with you and let me ask you this with me as well are we all that in his eyes are we pleasing to him do we do everything right does he agree with everything we do no but it's not because of that that he uh, is a, a friend that sticks closer than any brother it's because he loves us and that's the foundation and motivation of true fellowship the fellowship we're called to that partnership I love you so I'm going to put myself aside to be a blessing to you now think about it this way if everyone did such a thing then we'd be blessing each other constantly but I'm shy you could be a shy blessor you can be a, a blessing to someone and still be shy do you know that I don't, like to, I don't talk much. Yeah. Do you know how to write? No. You know how to text. We all, we all know how to do that. You could be a blessing. Even if you're shy, that does, that's not an excuse. Isolation's not an excuse. You'll complain and complain and complain about not growing, but understand God has committed, a, or, or rather called us to fellowship, to biblical fellowship, so that we can grow. So, what does fellowship does? You bless, you get blessed, right? You teach when you're at a fellowship. You teach people. And guess what? You're also getting taught. Because when you're at a fellowship, and I'm not just talking about a gathering uh, to eat some food and all that, but all of those things are, are motivated by the call to fellowship. We get together. We practice fellowship. We come together and practice this. If you practice isolation, you're practicing um, a new term that I've coined called grumpiness. I didn't coin that. You know I didn't. But you'll get good at being grumpy around everybody if you practice isolation. So, so we teach each other. When you're at, in fellowship, guess what you do? You teach people. You teach people. And they teach you. 
Some people don't like to be taught. Some people won't hang out in fellowship because they don't want to be taught by anybody because they can't be. Because uh, like, the, like Paul's writing said, only Jesus teaches me. And, and, and we'll take a quick look at that as we break this down. No, only Jesus doesn't teach you. The Lord set it up where we teach each other. And we have to humble ourselves enough to be taught by each other. Like if something, if we do something wrong and we're hanging out and somebody says, hey, let me, let me talk to you real quick. I love you, man. I just want to help you with that. That's, 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 that's something that's not good for you and, and I love you enough. I care about you. And I don't, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm not trying to spotlight you. Hey, everybody, look what they're doing. No, I love you enough to, to, to protect you. But in this fellowship, because we spent to ta- this time together, I noticed this. I noticed that you're on your phone too much. I noticed that 20 people could walk right by you and you're just not going to say hi to anybody. I noticed that you walk in, walk around with a cara de chancla. I noticed this and I love you and I want to just point out that, that it's not helpful, right? But see, the nice thing about fellowship is when it's your turn. Hey, I noticed that, I noticed that you're, you just look depressed all the time. Can I help you with something? I know it looks like you're hanging on by a thread, by a hair. Just hanging on. Could it be something's up with the walk? Can I pray with you on something? Can I, can I help you with something where maybe there's some sin going on? Maybe you're practicing isolation. So we teach each other and we're taught by each other. We love and are loved. If you're one who says, I don't feel no love in that church, I don't feel no love in that church, do you ever fellowship? I can't because those people just they're talking this negative, 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 that. Well, guess what? The only way to solve it is to walk in the call of fellowship that God's word tells us. It's not coming from me. You know, for time's sake, we just, we gotta, mm, we just have to do this. We're gonna finish this up with the scripture. So, so here we go. If this was a perfect church and we had all these things down, then we wouldn't be reading this today. But listen to Paul's instruction. Now I'm going to read out of the New King James because NLT let me down a little bit today. All right, so we know verse 9. We'll start from there. God is faithful. By whom we were called into fellowship of his son in partnership with his son. Verse 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's Paul. He says that you all speak the same thing and that there is no divisions among you, that you are perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. So verse, the the verse 10 is a high, tall order. For us to speak the same things to think the same way, right? To not have divisions among you. This is not God promoting a bunch of robots who are programmed to do the same thing everyone does at the same time, think the same way. This is not what he's saying. He's saying, look, there's a problem uh, in in the church in Corinth that you struggle with this. It's the opposite. You wanna aim at being in unity in your thought life. Aim at that. I think about Christ. I think about God's love for people. I think about his word. I think about what God's commandments are in my life and, how, and who you are to me because of what God's word says. So I think about that and hopefully you're thinking the same way, right? He's encouraging us the things we speak. He's not saying everybody has to speak in unison and, you know, like the military. You know, what is that? Hoo-ah! I don't know what that, which military branch that is. But, you know, you get it when they get them all in unison. It sounds powerful. That's not what he's saying. He's saying... Uh, we live in such a way that we, what we speak is edifying and encouraging and it, and it unites in Christ. Jesus is the one, the center of what we have to learn and who we have to learn about. And so our speech changes, right? When we come to the house of God, when we hang out together, this is our chance to practice and to speak godliness. I mean, you know, standing in a corner somewhere, somebody walks into the church and, oh, there comes that brother again. <laughs> Just want to say, stop it already. There comes that sister. Stop it already. Cut it. 
Because what you're doing is you're actually doing this. You're creating division. You're creating this kind of problem. Well, what do we do? What do we do? Well, he's telling us, I'm praying to the Lord that you will will learn how to speak for Jesus. Learn how to think the ways of Christ. Learn how to love the ways of the Lord. Is anybody getting this? The way we overcome our selfish perception, our selfish ideas, is to learn how to live for Christ. And if I learn how to live for Christ with my mouth and my thoughts and my deeds and my attitudes, and you learn how to live for Christ with your thoughts and your words and your deeds and your attitudes, guess where we all meet? We all meet in unity, in partnership with the Lord in fellowship. And so now, my opinion, God wants us to have an opinion, that's fine. But if my opinion doesn't line up with the Lord, then guess what? It comes second. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut because I'm going to defer to what God says about it. You listening? Anybody listening? Where do you practice that stuff? By gathering. Interesting, because this church had struggles. So so Paul writes the letter, goes on to say, Verse 11, for it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household. Well, we know some people in Chloe's household, they were either either ratting them out, they were ratting them out, or they were being righteous and saying, uh, Apostle Paul, our church is struggling. We need help. Help us because we're all over the place. And so Paul writes the letter. I believe the latter. I believe Chloe's household was righteous. They were gossipers. They were righteous. They were wanting to help the church become in partnership, in unity. And so it goes on to say, um, uh, Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you say, and this is what, what let, me see, let me take a look at the time. Oh my goodness, let's finish this up. So listen to this. He says, some of you say, I'm a Paul. The other one says, I, I I'm, a, I'm with Apollos. Some of you say, yeah, no, I'm not with any, you know, I'm with Peter. And so you're all kind of clicking. Does anybody know what a click is? If you don't know what a click is, here's the definition. <laughs> Comes from an old thing where, anyway, it just, <laughs> I don't have time for that. What I have time for is this, clicks. Clicks are a gravitational pull towards your self-opinion. Clicks are developed by selfishness. I, f- I click, I gravitate towards this guy who has my opinion. I gravitate toward this girl who's got my opinion. When the whole time the letter is this, gravitate towards the Lord Not his opinion, but his truth. Because he is truth and nothing's wrong. He's perfect. And so we need to gravitate. And so Paul's saying, look, you're saying you're Paulus, you're Peter, you're me. Some of you say, oh, I don't like anybody. I just, it's just me and Christ. Even that alone in itself is a problem. How how so? Because when you say, oh, everyone's messed up, so I only learn from the Lord. Well, you are out of practice with learning how to fellowship with imperfect people just like you. And by the way, modern day, Jesus physically is not here to tell you, hey, stop that. He might tell you in your spirit, but a lot of people in the body of Christ learn how to ignore his voice. God's saying, quit that gossiping. I'm not gossiping. I'm just telling the truth. Quit that backbiting. I'm not backbiting. I'm just telling it like it is because that's who I am. Well, if the Lord can't tell us because we know how to ignore his voice, then just believing in Christ only, you're not practicing what it means to be in unity and fellowship because it's hard. Use Brother Joe over here. Brother Joe texts me, calls me and says, hey, pastor, what's going on? How come we didn't do that? told me something about text to give. I'm like, you're right. I could have said, Brother Joe, what do you know, man? I could have just, come on, Joe, what's the matter with you? If he would have said something wrong, I would have told him, I love you, my brother, but no, but no. And that would have been a loving fellowship also. But he said something to me that, man, I, yeah, I forgot about that. That's a good idea. Let me do that real quick, right? We're practicing, being able to communicate to each other. And so, 
We're called to fellowship in the form of partnership. That takes practice. That takes love. That takes risk. That takes risk. Because who you hang around with, that's you're going to be like. That's who you're going to be like. You know, wow, see, that's why I don't want to hang around with brother so-and-so because, man, that guy just never has a nice thing to say about anybody. I get that. I understand that. And brother so-and-so needs to repent. But don't broad brush it and say, because of that, I can't obey God. Be part of the answer. Not part of the problem. Because you'll benefit in this way. You'll grow. They might grow. And even if they don't, that's not for you. That's for the Lord to deal with if they don't want to listen to you. They don't want to listen to me. But I guarantee you this. If we partner with Christ and gravitate towards what he's saying, then that opinion and that opinion and that opinion and that opinion and their opinion, all of that's going to be sub subject to the Lord. And we have to learn how to really walk in fellowship and partnership. You do that, and you will. Not only will you grow, we'll grow. The church, the body of Christ will grow in strength. We won't be fragmented. Amen? Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, guys. You guys have been so, so patient this morning. Yes. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Well, this morning, we're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, have the ushers, I should say, have, have, themselves, have, have them get ready and so forth. But this is what we're going to do today. I'm going to do this. This word, I believe, and this was the motivation that I, the Lord put it in my heart. He just dropped it into my heart. The Lord is sharing, showing us that everything takes time. But if we're going in the direction of Christ, all the things that are a problem in your life will start to line up. And especially if you're struggling with temptation, but you keep hanging around with people who mess with the stuff you're tempted by, you cut that off for a time until you can reach them for Christ because you're not strong enough and you get a part of fellowship, you'll begin to get edified. Come on up, my brothers and sisters. You'll begin to get edified. Come on up. I want you to stand up here with me for a moment. I'm going to have you stand for just 60 seconds. Everyone in the congregation today, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. What God spoke to you today, right in your seats, let's join in, let's bow our heads, and let's just ask the Lord for his guidance. Maybe ask God to open your spiritual ears he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying so that you can hear what he's saying. Not the p opinions or the harsh communication of Pastor Tony, but the truth that sets us free, that brings us into true fellowship. Father, in Jesus' precious name, every one of us, we come to you thanking you, Lord God, for powerful passages of Scripture like that that show us, Lord God, that when the body is not in partnership and in fellowship that we affect the power of the message to the rest of the world. Help us to see, Lord God, how we're hindering our own growth when we struggle to fellowship. Gracious Father, we want to learn how to do it your way. And we know we've got to weed through the junk and, and, and weed through the imperfections of other people. And even, even our hearts got to get softer so that we can take the risks. And Lord God, we can, we can grow, Lord God, and not worry and not be afraid. We just ask that you would help us. Holy Spirit, we need you to help us because, Lord, sometimes we don't even know how to make sense of what to do first. What do we do first? Lord, Holy Spirit, help us so we would step in the right direction and become in partnership in the body of Christ, especially in the days we live in, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us. And we su submit and and humble ourselves before you, Lord, and ask that you will be pleased in our life, be pleased with our life as we obey you. 
And we thank you in Jesus' name. Everyone who agrees with me on that or a prayer like that, say it with me. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. The thought that came to my mind is, yeah, we'll see. Huh, the enemy, man. We'll see. You know how, what we'll see? Let's just focus on Jesus, and that's what you'll see. And when you see the negative, the Lord will show you what to do with it. And if you don't know what to do with it, you either get help or you don't do anything, but you don't contribute to it. You step into the love of Christ. Be the example. This morning, I took most of the time to make sure this word got out. Don't regret it at all. I know, I could feel it in my spirit. We received today. I felt like the way the, God, the Lord gave me this message, it was going to help us on personal levels and as a church. But specifically, I feel it in my, my heart on a personal level. Maybe there's some out there who you've, you've been playing around with it. Little by little, you could be making texts, now a phone call, now you're meeting up, hanging out with people who have nothing in common with your Christianity. It's only a matter of time before you don't think yourself too strong. I better not think myself too strong. No, we are not. We are weak without Christ. He's our strength. He is the keeper, the one that keeps us, and teaches us how to keep our own heart. So I felt like the Spirit of God was saying that too. I don't know who, but it could be just people online. This morning, we're going to give to the Lord. It's going to be simple. You already know. I don't, not, I don't have a preacher sermon to you, but I have some sort of bad news for about a week. It's going to be a week and a half total. Our, we're working on something with our bank, and so for a week and a half, temporarily, we cannot use the text to give. We have a good faithful core of people here who use text to give, and I appreciate that. Those of you on TikTok who've been relying on our text to give, uh, we thank you for, for giving to, uh, it, to the church that way. What, we're, what we have to do, something has come up where we have to, uh, to bring, get some instruction on how to communicate to the church what, uh, what you need to do in your text to give account. Because each person who texts to give sets it up real quick. And then it goes through the right channels. Well, some channels have changed at the bank. We're using uh, a, a different uh, setup in our same bank that's more uh, efficient and a better blessing for the church. So we're willing to, to, to lose that week and a half. So, it, so this morning, Wednesday, next Sunday, we won't be able to text to give. But by the next Wednesday, we should have it set up and we'll be able to uh, send a card to you. Brother Bob doesn't know it yet, but he had made us some cards. We're going to have the new instructions, Bob, and, and we'll you know, be able to give it out so people can renew their text to give. Apologize for that. And during this time, finances are needed. So I'm going to ask you, go out of your way. Stop at an ATM. Pull out an old school dusty check and write something out that way if you have to. That way we can continue to give to the Lord. Everybody good with that? Amen. Let's pray. Oh, no, let's not pray. Let's pass out some envelopes. Amen. If you need an offering envelope, lift your hand. One of our sisters will get one right to you. That gives me a chance to drop my envelope in right now. There we go. Amen. So there you go. There you go. Um, thank you, Jesus. And I wish I could tell you text to give. But it'll have to be about a week and a half before we have that path opened up again. There's always that drop-off slot we have, too. We have a drop-off slot. Didn't make it tonight? You're online? You live close enough? Come by. Right by the front door is a secure drop-off slot. If someone tries to take it, they get electrocuted. So that's how it works. <laughs> okay. the, yeah, actually, there's a miniature guillotine in there. <laughs> they lose a hand. According to scripture, thief. Anyway, uh, so let's go ahead. Let's, now let's pray over this offering and then let's worship God. Father, in Jesus' name, we're grateful for the word that you give to us. We're grateful for the opportunity to give. Lord, we know your blessing is what we really need. And so we pray, bless the families abundantly. Increase our faith. We know you do. You've taught us. But Lord, we want to obey you and see it in action. So, Lord, we pray great blessing over all the gifts that come in and all the givers. Those who couldn't and those who are not able right now, Father, we pray that you would bless them with what they need. 
so that they can participate. We ask this for your glory and honor and for the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. celebrations yeah come on now fellowship <laughs> men's will be in the fellowship hall and the women's will be at z's ah, I'm, I'm jealous <laughs> did I, go? I went once their year rule is the bomb. oh that man come on my brother <laughs> enjoy but uh like patrick said start practicing fellowship right yeah God bless you. God bless you. yes hallelujah <laughs> Amen. Thanks, Brother Rudy. I love his positiveness. And, and Sister Brenda, are you popping up here? Amen. You got something? Oh, amen. Let's. No, that's all right. No, 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 no. That's okay. That's all right, Brother Rudy. That's all right. No, no. That's good. That's good. So, um, I don't know if the pictures are up, but we have for the ladies, we have some Come on, ladies. exciting things going on. Come on, on. ladies. There you go. Um, the first one will be Saturday, May 4th. Fourth, and it's called Bloom, and it's a spring women's event. So how it works is Huntington Park is throwing the event, and we're hosting the event. So we're going to have over a hundred ladies here for that. Um, there, I food is included, so there is a fee of and a guest speaker, a powerful guest speaker. So there will be a fee of thirty dollars per person. Um, they're also having a spring theme table decorating contest. Um, if you're the type of person that loves decorating and would like to do a table, um, there's openings for that. And then also, because we're hosting, if you're interested in helping me or us prepare the church for this event, there's a lot to prepare as far as cleaning. And then, like, we have to decorate our part the event um so just let me know and then i'll let you know the days and times we're going to come in and do that and then next for the women um in november as you guys know we have a women's gold conference coming Amen. and yes. today is deadline number one and what that means the conference price is actually 169 but if you um sign up today it's only 129 and then in july it's 149 so is that, um, that additional is just is that uh, additional like what? just communicate the um, total so amount it goes up 20 dollars every increment I see. but okay. um so if you're able to go and and you want to meet the deadline by today you will you know save the most money um, and, but how it works is that pays for the conference, and then in the fall, um, we have to pay another 130 um, for our housing, our rooms, and all that. Possibly, hopefully, out of that 130, we'll be able to help pay for transportation. It's in San Diego; transportation is not included, so we have to come together and and work out transportation. Um, so that'll be 129 today, 130 in the fall. And we also 
if you can um, pray about driving. We definitely have enough ladies going where we can't um, just take one car. So we need at least two cars. We need two to three drivers and um, either rent a van or a car. Okay, so um, that's how that works. So just see me if you would like to meet the deadline today. Okay? Amen. Right. And uh, the only thing I'll add to that is um, if the brothers responding to your announcement on, on the help part, if you want to, you can, you can text her, but you can also text me and I'll let her know. Throw a thumbs up. We'll put that team together and it'll okay, go well. Okay, so in other words, you men could help also to prepare for the women's event because it's like a lot of cleaning and yeah. stuff. So anyone who wants to help, yeah. shoot me a thumbs up, yeah. you know, and we'll Thank go from there. Okay. All right? Okay. Very We're cool. Good. I don't need that. Oh. I got a big mouth. <laughs> But you stay up here. Uh, all right, we're going to go ahead and close up our service today. We got these fellowships today. It's going to be a great time. Hang out. Let's get some practice in. Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to bless our, our, our service. And then you guys know what we're going to do right after, so don't run off. Father, we love you and thank you for the opportunity that we have to, to live out what we learn. Lord, we pray this day in the name of Jesus that your love, wisdom, truth, and self-discipline will come through our life and we will become a greater and greater blessing to others. And Lord, we pray that we would sow that into the body of Christ and the body would be blessed from it. And we thank you, Lord, just for allowing us to be in your house today. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. God bless you. We are dismissed. And